Hey guys, this is Ron Perry and welcome to the Model Railroads and Structure Show. Hello guys and welcome to the first episode of Model Railroads and Structures Show. In today's episode we're going to be building Gilmister Coal from Medina, New York, uh, made by Blazer Modeling 3. Gilmister Coal is a commercial storage where commercial clients would come and pick up their coal for heating. This kit is uh, every bit of what I consider a craftsman kit. The reason being, it has a uh, very good color instructions, laser printed. It's on normal paper, but it doesn't need to be in a book as long as it teaches you how to build the kit. There's nothing worse than spending $148 on a kit and not having instructions to build the kit. Uh, in later episodes, I'll show you exactly what I mean by this. Um, this is a Craftsman kit to me because we've got wood, injection molded plastic, Before my mic gave out. I also showed this. And plaster of Paris parts that I've primed already. Also, something that is very rare in the kit is uh, not this corrugated metal right here, but these, these uh, are fiber optics for lighting within the kit. And uh, this is, this is, you know, you add a little bit of electronics to a kit, it, it goes a long way in teaching you uh, a lot about the fun in Model Railroad. So today we're going to be building, uh, we're going to be painting uh, the coal chutes, taking the handles off of the laser cut sheet, put them on the coal chute. We're going to be building up the base of the coal storage. One thing I noticed while taking the, the frame out of the sprue is that the, the wood notches are fairly substantial and actually broke the, the wood uh, and I put in little, I crazy glued in little sh pieces into the spots on e either side to uh, fill in the gap. Uh, that will, uh, oh, well, after that's painted, you won't, you, we won't see that. Uh, and actually the lines that are broken into there will actually add to the realism of the, of the product. So my first step will be to go outside uh, off camera and I'll paint these coal chutes oxide red spray paint. I uh, glued the coal chutes together with, with CA and gel and uh, some parts I used the free flowing CA, crazy glue. 
and uh, we'll, we'll go outside off camera and paint them oxide red and that'll get the base color for uh, our rusty hole shoots and I already painted the base with camouflage tan which will just be the base color I'm gonna today we're gonna be uh, painting around the marks with grimy black which is a grayish black to get into the corners where I want to add depth before adding my concrete colored paint and finally we're going to paint and cut out all the handles from this laser cut sheet and put, place them on the coal chutes so that hopefully by the end of this episode we will complete the base of the coal tower. So outside I uh, went and uh, painted the base and the outside round of the, the frame to hold the coal tower. I also painted the coal tower pieces, oxide red. And we painted the finished coal chutes that were just put together with the CA, as I said earlier. Next step is to paint around the bottom of the coal chutes just to get into these grooves. You may ask yourself, why did I prime this beforehand? The simple answer is that is you want to get paint into the plaster because it soaks up paint like you wouldn't believe. So when we come back with our concrete paint, we'll just be covering up the boards on top and the black is going to show in the crevices given added depth. That's done. So as well with our coal chutes, we're also going to add Grimy black. Around the outside so that we also get some depth. I want to add some around the main metal parts. Not really the detail parts because the detail parts usually show rust. I've also got a bit of water in with this paint so that the grimy black will show through. Another thing is is if you just touch and get just get the outline with the black you don't have to paint the whole part. Again, just the metal parts, or the, the sheet metal parts. I'll do those off camera. Concrete paint I'm using is uh, <laughs> Martha Stewart's craft paint, uh, wet cement, uh, which means it probably has a little bit of a gloss on it. But even though there's a gloss, my make pigment, cargo dust, and wash, dark wash, will cover all that up. Just gonna put the paint on top of the piece of wood that we're not going to use. It's a perfect piece. Then 
have your paint out. You don't want to add a lot of paint, have a lot of paint on the brush. Now we want the brush to be flat so as not to go into the cracks but to just paint onto the flat surfaces. Taking your paint off the brush is commonly called as dry brushing. Where the paint generally dry. You don't have to worry about it. Seeping into holes. As you can see, I painted into that spot spot there, it'll be okay. So now for the thing. A bunch of paint on. And we'll paint the rest of this piece. thick over top of the black so that we can cover it up in about one or two coats. It would probably take about two coats to cover it up. It doesn't have to be perfect. Your second and third coats if you need a third coat. Remember, this isn't a race to the finish. It may be for me, because I'm on the clock most of the time. However, for you, it isn't a race to the finish, so be patient. Be ready to come back and hit it again. We can get into this hobby too. to get stressed out. If there's some part of this video that you don't, don't like, maybe I'm going too slow painting these parts, maybe I'm adding too much parts painting, maybe I'm not talking enough during the painting process, let me know down in the comments. So that I can pr improve my videos. I'm not an expert, I have never been on video before. I'm actually quite nervous doing this. However, I see a lot of people who are long time hobbyists, who know a lot about electricity, electronics, and rolling stock, and taking photos of the model railroads around us. However, Sometimes I see their work online and it's I'm not saying it's not good, but maybe if they seen other people do things for free, you don't have to buy these as the DVD. They're available on YouTube. And you can find out these tricks too if they are tricks. So as you can see, our primer is a little bit darker than the, the light gray concrete, which is simulating concrete or a limestone block here. I don't know which. Remember to share the hobby with the little ones in the house. Because after we're gone, well, You'd want somebody to carry on the torch. After 
after attaching the coal chutes to the base with gel CA, I started weathering the base with MIG pigments cargo dust. Part number is P235. After applying the pigment, I fix it with alcohol just to get it to fit it to seep into the cracks. After after the alcohol dries, I use MIG washes to dark wash to go over and just add an extra bit of dirt over the entire base. After the base is weathered I start adding the tower and then put the legs on to the base. Using the gel CA makes it easier to, for gluing plaster pieces together. Next I use the normal CA glue to glue these pieces together. The normal CA will seep into the edges making it easier to get a solid fit. Make sure to stagger the seams properly at this point. Not doing so will show more than you may realize. Not shown in the video is how I run the pigments along the seams of the tank and then finish them off with alcohol to fix the pigments into the cracks. On the next video I'll show how I add the, the slide on decals, add the access ladders the big ladder to the top of the model that goes to the hoist house the graded pathways yeah that's about it so thank you for watching the video if you liked it press the like button if you have a comment please comment below subscribing really helps us out and if you want to contribute Go to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash Ron Perry, R-O-N-P-A-R-E. Thank you for watching the video.